who is this guy in Gala Shields Town Centre? I think I recognise him from somewhere else. Who is this man in the great English border city of Carlisle? He looks extremely familiar to me for Gala Shields. Do we worship a river in Gala Shields? I see the centre of our town. And more to the point, who is he? The question is, who is this man? Who is this man who has statues of him in the great English cities of Carlisle and they also in the great borders towns like Gala Shields? What is it that draws hundreds, if not thousands, of tourists, people of Scots descent from all over the world, particularly America, I have to say, to this, this small, unassuming graveyard in the middle of nowhere in the Scottish borders? I'll tell you what it is. It's this gravestone over here. This monument over here. A memorial to one Mr. John Armstrong of Gilnocky, or Johnny Armstrong, the most famous, revered, feared border reaver of them all. Beside the river Esk here near Langham lies another seat, important site of the Armstrong and Johnny Armstrong clan. This imposing building in Eskdale Muir is Gilnocky Tower home to the Armstrong clan and the head of that clan was Johnny Armstrong Classic example of a heavily fortified or reaver peel tower. Notice the almost complete absence of windows. Just, just the small slits which could be fired from, but not into. This here was Johnny's actual wheelie bin where he put all his uh, rubbish in that. These really are the borderlands, the disputed lands, the no man's land between Scotland in the north and England in the south, the land where you fought and reaved or you died. Johnny Armstrong rose up in this countryside. He wasn't born into nobility or elected. He was a natural leader. He was the guy that came up on top of society and ruled over men, inspired men, led men, and made the country what it was.
from here. Johnny had access to the Scottish borderlands, Liddesdale, Teviotdale and beyond. But he also had access to the English lands and the great city of Carlisle, from which most of his reaving and plundering took place. This was the final destination for a lot of the Borders Reavers. The place where they met their maker. It is the imposing Carlisle Castle. The great ancient city of Carlisle and its huge looming fortress in the centre of the city. The Reavers were brought here, tried and hanged. Right in the heart of Carlisle, the English fortress. Johnny Armstrong, however, suffered a less dignified fate. And not at the hands of the English kings, but at the hands of the Scottish king, King James V. Johnny never even made it here for a fair trial. There's more to this cemetery than simply the final resting place of Johnny Armstrong. For this was the place where Johnny Armstrong and his band of men were treacherously betrayed and murdered by King James V. In a last ditch and desperate attempt to control the border reavers, Johnny was lured here under false pretense and then hung with no trial. stone here marks the actual spot where Johnny Armstrong and his men were bundled in a pit and buried. The monument in the grave in the churchyard that I just showed you there earlier was put up a couple of hundred years later to, to commemorate Johnny Armstrong. One writer has said that when the English received news of Johnny Armstrong's death, it was like the Americans receiving news of the death of Al Capone, such was Johnny's fearsome reputation across the border. But Johnny was extremely popular, extremely powerful, and extremely liked within the border society. He rose to the top of the society and guided his clan and his countrymen through very, very turbulent times. The Border Reavers stood apart from England and Scotland. They were a society and a law unto themselves. When King James V of Scotland murdered Johnny Armstrong here, an act of pure desperation, it was Johnny's revenge a hundred years later when the people of the borders refused to fight for him against the English. And the Scottish army was slaughtered, absolutely slaughtered, 30 miles south from here. James's act of treachery on the border reavers did nothing for him. He was wrote out of history, he was remembered more as a, a liar and a deceiver. Whereas Johnny Armstrong grew as a legend, a hero. As 
Is this Johnny Armstrong? Is it Johnny Armstrong in Gala? Yes! <laughs> Most modern history that you read these days paints the border reavers as thieves, murderers, bad people. Now undoubtedly these guys lived in violent, turbulent times, but they were a product of their society, they had to live like that. For me, there's still Walter Scott depiction of heroes, leaders, great men is more appropriate and true and I think that's how we, especially people from the borders or people who have descended from the borders should remember the Johnny Armstrongs of the world who could only be controlled by the entire might of the British or Scottish armies You can't help standing on this site here, lamenting the death of one of our most notorious but loved characters from the borders and think, I'm no Scottish, I'm no English, I'm a borderer, I'm a descendant of the border weavers, I live in the borders and I come from the borders. While I was down here today in Carlisle, I was going to steal some sheep. I was going to see how much sheep, how many sheep I could get in the back of my car, just to keep the history and traditions of the Reavers alive. But there's no need for that because the curse of the Reavers has been inflicted on the city because of this, this stone. Some Scottish. Bishop in Glasgow cursed every single part of the border reavers and what he stood for. That went for the English reavers as well as the, the, the Scottish ones. But since they've erected this monument to that curse in Carlisle, the city's residents believe the whole place is cursed. So I'm going to leave the sheep, they can keep them. And they've suffered enough at the hands of this border. you border riders and listen to my song my story has been told before and I'll not detain you long it's the tale of Johnny Armstrong and the king who did betray a man of trust and honesty his cattle taken from the enemy but they hung him from the gallows tree Johnny Armstrong's gone away